Tonight, crime crackdown. The new police task force to stop bikies and gangs destroying our city. Big savings for safe drivers as Vic Roads is partially sold off. But what does it mean for Rego? Tributes to the Geelong man killed in a bungled fish and chip shop robbery as manslaughter charges are laid. A rough start to the weekend with the price of petrol soaring to $2.39 a litre. A family business of 22 years destroyed by petty thieves. And Nick Kyrgios on his best behaviour as he charges into Wimbledon's third round. This is Melbourne's Nine News with Alicia Loxley. Good evening. Our top cop has warned Melbourne's outlaw bikies there's nowhere to hide, launching a new hit squad aimed at stamping out gun crime. The Chief Commissioner says the Viper Task Force, made up of almost 100 policemen and women, will stop gangs in their tracks. Reid Butler has the story. It's the bikey busting Viper Task Force. Morning, are we ready? If you ask Victoria Police, they're more than ready and preparing to strike. Our aim is to smash these individuals and these gangs. We will be doing everything we can. The squad, touted as mobile and fast acting, will be led by former Piranha Task Force Detective Inspector Anthony Brown. 80 police officers will be deployed to Viper, the task force, to work in conjunction with the Armed Crime Squad and the ECHO Task Force. The Chief Commissioner promising everyday policing won't be affected by the drain on resources. I can absolutely guarantee uh, we will see no loss of service delivery as a result of the establishment of this task force. The pressure is on Victoria Police following Saturday's assassination attempt on ex-Mongols bikey Sam Abdul Rahim and the subsequent carjacking of a mother and child. Then on Wednesday, a home in Epping was sprayed with bullets, retaliation, police believe, for a shootout on a Pascavale Street on June 14. The turf wars between Middle East and organised crime figures have largely played out here across Melbourne's north and northwest. Among Viper's top priorities will be the monitoring of specific suburbs where the gangs are flourishing. The opposition blames Victoria's anti-bikey laws, claiming they've been watered down and are weak compared to other states. Bikies want to move out from the Sunshine State so they can move to Bikies Paradise in Victoria. We haven't used any unlawful association legislation uh, since it was brought into place. Why? Um, we've had difficulties in utilising that legislation. Reid, there seems to be some discontent within the force about Viper. Yes, Alicia, Nine News has spoken to senior police who've described Viper as, quote, a waste of time and resources and nothing more than a PR stunt. There's also been suggestion that some officers simply don't want to join the task force. The chief commissioner insists that Viper is not a stunt and says the task force has nothing to do with any kind of political pressure from the state government eager to look tough on crime in an election year. The proof, though, will be in the pudding. The public's been promised arrests and that's what needs to happen if Victoria Police is to appear in control. Alicia, the task force, gets to work on Monday. We shall see. OK, Reid, thank you. Well, there are discounts for good drivers and free permits for learners under a 40-year deal to modernise Vic Roads. The state will receive billions of dollars up front and retain ownership, but opponents are slamming the so-called fire sale as a decades-long dud. State political reporter Mark Santamartino. If you haven't been caught speeding, running a red light or drink driving for three years, it's about to become cheaper to renew your licence. That will now be a gift from the state. As part of a deal to modernise Vic Roads, safe drivers will soon save $73, that's 25%, on a 10-year renewal. From August, it will also be free to take online tests and get licence cards for L and P platers, saving them at least $155. This is $150 essentially back in their pocket, which they deserve. Treasurer Tim Pallas is in for some cash too. $8 billion up front in exchange for the right to run and get a cut of Vic Road's registration, licensing and custom plates business for the next 40 years. This is not a privatisation in anybody's language. It's waddling and it's quacking. It's privatisation. The enterprise agreement rolls on and everybody's been guaranteed a job. Aware Super is part of the consortium signing the deal with Victoria. We do expect it to be a solid return, but obviously uh, 
it will rely on us delivering a good service to customers. It's going to mean lower service quality, it's going to mean less jobs, lower wages, uh, worse working conditions for workers. Uh, it is a terrible decision all round. The government is promising strict privacy and pricing control. Our data will continue to be owned by the state and the cost of registering a vehicle or renewing your licence will still be decided by the government. I don't trust this government. I don't trust their probity and I don't think Victorians should either. We're not in the business of jacking up registration and licensing fees. Since Daniel Andrews became Premier, the cost of registering a vehicle has, on average, increased by a little more than 2% every year. In the same time, Victoria's net debt has grown fivefold, a problem the Treasurer hopes his $8 billion deal will help solve after he jets off for Europe and the US tonight. Mark Santomartino, Nine News. A new father has been charged with the manslaughter of a would-be thief during a botched robbery at a Cario takeaway shop. Sheldon Broderick's loved ones say he was going through a tough time but didn't deserve to die. And Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are warned Eliza Rugg's story contains images and voices of deceased persons. Sheldon Broderick's friends say the father of three should be remembered as more than a suspected thief who died after a bungled burglary. My kids looked up to him. Um, they loved him. Um, yeah, he was just a very great guy. I looked up to him like a dad. He did everything for me. In the early hours of June 20, the Indigenous artist from Norlane broke into the fish and chip shop on Karangamite Drive in Corio. He was obviously going through, you know, some, some stuff, you know, like... He didn't want to hurt nobody. Mr Broderick was interrupted and confronted by a passerby, 31-year-old Jake Mewitt. Police allege Mr Mewitt struck Mr Broderick in the head with a cricket bat. The 48-year-old was flown to the Alfred Hospital but died of his injuries three days later. I still haven't processed it yet, like that he's gone. I, was, I still feel like, you know, waiting for a phone call, waiting to go pick him up from the train station. He was a good bloke, you know. He didn't, he didn't deserve to go the way he did. Jake Mewitt stayed at the scene to call triple zero. He was initially questioned and released, but homicide detectives arrested him earlier today and charged him with manslaughter. The accused man faced court in Geelong this morning for a brief hearing where he was able to convince the magistrate to release him on bail. So the new father can continue providing for his young family. He'll return to court in October. Eliza Rugg, Nine News. It'll be a little more expensive to hit the road this weekend with fuel prices jumping yet again. Let's go live now to Penelope Lish, who's in South Melbourne. Penny unleaded is well over $2 a litre. That's right, Alicia. You can see $2.39.9 a litre for unleaded here in South Melbourne. Nine News has also seen it that high in Elstonwick and Taronga today. The RACV say that's the highest price in the state. It's jumped from around $2.05 and $2.07 a litre in the last few days. It's also the highest price, nudging $2.40. We've seen since petrol prices began to rise under global pressures a few months ago. The good news is, though, you can still fill up for as low as a $1.97.7 a litre. The average is around $2.11 for unleaded. The RACV recommending you don't fill up for much more than $2 a litre. So certainly worth shopping around if you can, Alicia, especially if you're heading on some school holiday road trips. Absolutely. Good advice, Penny. Thank you. A man has been released from custody following the shooting death of a 43-year-old in Cranbourne. He was gunned down outside a Leckie Street unit on Wednesday night. Police later arrested a 49-year-old man who lives there, but no charges have been laid. Thieves have used a ute to rip the doors off a family-run bottle shop in Sydenham, stealing cigarettes and causing thousands of dollars damage. As Maggie Rayworth tells us, the owners fear it could take a week to clean up their store. It took 22 years for Amajit Sohi's family to build this business, but just a few minutes for thieves to destroy it. Everything was smashed here. Crowbar in hand, a man bashes at the glass doors. Failing to bring them down, he uses a ute, bringing shelves crashing down in the process. Clad in high vis, the thug pulls out a power tool to get to cartons of cigarettes. While his accomplice prepares for the getaway, the main offender fills a bucket, then takes off. They had a ute 
and they put the string around the door and spill it. The floor was flooded with broken glass and alcohol when the owner arrived. The burglary unfolding at 4.30 this morning at the Celebrations Bottle Shop on Overton Lear Boulevard. You can see the front door and the shelves and the shelves at the back, um, clearly visible. Staff say $20,000 in cigarettes was stolen and another $20,000 worth of alcohol was destroyed. We're talking about, um, about 30, 40 boxes of wines and they were expensive wines, 50, 60, 80, 90 dollars a bottle of wine. Today, customers were disgusted by the thieves' actions. These guys are, you know, just honest people, just doing their jobs and uh, making a living and... This is what happens to him. What's even more heartbreaking is that staff were meant to be celebrating today marks 22 years since they took over the business, but instead of marking the milestone, they've spent the day cleaning up. It's going to take a few days to clean up the mess here. Police are now working to identify the two offenders. Maggie Rayworth, Nine News. Health chiefs have warned of a fresh Omicron wave as a new sub-variant begins to dominate. BA5 can lead to more serious illness and could cause significant reinfection among Australians who have already recovered from the virus. Fiona Willen reports. Australians are making holiday plans, but Omicron has plans of its own. We are expecting a further wave of COVID over the coming months. A new sub-variant is taking off. BA5 is on track to become dominant and it could make people more sick. This one might be more capable of causing deeper lung infections. There are warnings to those who have already had COVID-19. We've seen overseas that there is a greater risk of reinfection. We're not talking about three months, six months and then you might be vulnerable again. This is something where in a matter of weeks you could be vulnerable. The health system is also vulnerable, with hospitals already stretched to breaking point. When we have a system that is running so over capacity and is so uh, stressed, we don't have the ability to meet increased demand. There's also been a spike in deaths from COVID, with another 33 reported today, taking Australia's total fatalities since the pandemic began to nearly 10,000. Today, state and federal health ministers met in Canberra to talk about easing pressure on emergency departments. Adding to the problem is the crisis in aged care. In New South Wales, we have uh, hospitals that have uh, hundreds uh, hundreds of aged care residents who have no place to go uh, because of the closure of aged care facilities. If we can't discharge patients safely into our aged care system, then our hospital beds are, are full. Experts say the best way to keep COVID patients out of hospital is to increase the uptake of antiviral medications and the number of Australians getting their third jab. Now it's not about whether you get infected, it's how many infections you have. Fiona Willen, Nine News. Anthony Albanese will tonight meet French President Emmanuel Macron in an effort to reboot relations. Our Europe correspondent Brett McLeod is in Paris. Brett, what's the mood like there? Well, Alicia, from uh, Anthony Albanese's point of view, it's all very positive. For Emmanuel Macron, we'll have to wait and see. The pair in a couple of hours will have a working lunch at the Elysee Palace. Afterwards, both will address the media. So we'll find out if Anthony Albanese has been successful in smoothing troubled waters over that broken submarine deal. He wouldn't say whether Australia will apologise over the deal. Instead, he says he's trying to build a positive future. What I want to do, though, is to make sure that we can look forward. Look forward in a way that builds a relationship to what it should be. It should be a relationship in which we can rely upon each other as we have for a long period of time and in which we can trust each other. And this isn't just about submarines. France is the current president of the EU and Australia needs their support to try to get some sort of EU trade deal by the early part of next year. Alicia? OK, Brett there in Paris, thank you. Well, two eastern grey kangaroos have been shot with arrows on a private property at Hillsville. A large male survived the attack, but the remains of a young female were discovered nearby. Killing wildlife in Victoria is illegal and carries a maximum penalty of up to two years jail. Melbourne Airport has seen a huge crowd surge once again. Thousands looking to take a break from Victoria's winter chill for the second week of the school holidays. Around 95,000 passengers were expected to pass through the terminals today. Travellers are being advised to arrive two hours early for domestic flights and three hours early if heading overseas. OK, now with a look ahead at tonight's sport for you, here is Tony Jones, live from London. 
Thanks, Alicia. Good evening. Well, Nick Curious, of course, never too far away from the headlines, and nor is he today. He's been found around, fined around $15,000 Australian for that vile act of spitting in his first round match. I mean, really, it's uh, you know, a, a mute message when you consider that he's already made about $220,000 just for making the third round. And the way he's going in the form that he's in, he's going to make a hell of a lot more than that. You'll find out for yourself a little later on in sport. Also coming up, it is a sellout tonight at Marvel Stadium, and that's where we find Braden Ingram. Well, Tony, still it's a while from the opening bounce, but already the clouds, crowds are flowing in here. It's really an important game for the Saints tonight if they look to keep touch with the top eight, given they've had three straight losses. The Blues, meanwhile, can climb back into the top four. I'll have all the final teams plus some news out of the Demons camp over in Adelaide. Tony? All right, Braden, we'll talk to you then. Also coming up tonight, why Chris Scott was MIA from his weekly media conference. Could a star giant be lured home to Victoria? And the Aussies stormed a victory in Sri Lanka thanks to a very unlikely cameo. Alicia, that's all coming up live from Wimbledon a little later on. Very much looking forward to that, Tony. We'll see you soon. Up next for you in Nine News, Melbourne's population drain, how the dwindling numbers impacts every Victorian. Plus, a cruise ship's chilling encounter with an iceberg and Donald Trump's derogatory attack on the former aide who testified against him.